happening? So in this video, we are going to be reviewing the phenomenal game, The Anointed, David Saves Keela. If I had to review this game with like just one meme, it would be the classic meme template. Me, mom, can we get triple A video game? Mom, we have triple A video game at home, triple A video game. Yes, this game is rather interesting. There is a lot to point out in this game, so we're gonna dive into it. Starting with the fact that the anointed David saves Keela, it chooses a random Bible story that's literally 14 verses long. Now, mind you, that is probably a better thing to do than this other video game that I criticized one time. Enjoy watching the animation of the Old Testament in its entirety. You're gonna make a video game about the entire Old Testament. Now, the first thing, obviously, is the name, The Anointed David Saves Keila. Yeah, that sounds like a game you tell all your friends about, doesn't it? But if you don't like the name of this game, it's okay because they're releasing a sequel. It has an even better name, The Anointed. Saul resents David. Yeah, go tell all your friends about that game coming up. But we're gonna start with the obvious, and the obvious is that the graphics are actually fairly decent in this game. I was kind of impressed. I don't know if they downloaded a lot of assets from like the Unity store or something, or if they actually designed them themselves, but whoever designed this game actually chose some fairly good looking visuals. I mean, take a look at David. Like he's a dapper looking guy, just like myself. You know, we're on the same page there. The maps look pretty decent. So we're starting off on the right foot at a glance. At a glance, I was kind of impressed. I mean, you have this menu logo right here. I mean, that looks cool. I mean, it looks kind of swag, man. It's got my attention. The game consists of running around, talking to a bunch of completely random people in David's life, breaking pots. I've literally no idea why you need to break pots, why that has any play into the story of David's life. There's some absolutely incredible combat. And for those of you people who just love a video game being completely interrupted with these random Bible quiz questions, this is the game for you. Bro, I'm basically halfway at being a theology professor at this point. On the side, I will give this game props for actually trying to implement a parkour system of sorts. It's kind of cool. You get to climb up these ledges, run around, jump off of things like, you know, you're some ninja or something. And half the time, you just end up stuck on some ledge and you can't move. <laughs> No, it's okay. I'm fine. Don't worry. I'm fine. I also love the fact that whenever you fall in this game, you take exorbitant amounts of fall damage. <laughs> yeah, you can get stabbed by a Philistine with a sword, and it does less damage than falling five feet in this game. So that's nice. There are also these random save points when you're running around and trying to save your progress that look disturbingly like pentagrams. <laughs> Oh, this game is great. Wait a minute! Is that a pentagram in my house? Oh, no, 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 no. It's okay, Grandpa. It's just... It's the Star of David. That's... Yeah, that's... That's all it is. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's okay, then. So like I mentioned earlier, the video game focuses on the story of David traveling to the city of Keilah, which had been invaded by Philistines who were basically enslaving the people of the city. Sets were kind of a simple story, but cool at the same time, plenty of action and combat. So with an action adventure game like this, you've got to get the combat right. It's more important than the graphics, more important than incredible parkour, and it's more important than any other part of the game. And if you don't get the combat right, your game's probably never going to take off the ground. If I had to describe the, how the combat in this game is, it's basically like if you ever seen two kids sword fighting and they just wave the swords back and forth with the same two moves over and over again because they, they don't know any better oh, the bliss of simplicity that's basically how the combat in this game is there's a couple different weapons but they all operate exactly the same and there's like one basic strike move and then there's this one weird move where you jump through the air and it's supposed to look cool but it ends up looking just weird instead i mean i think of other games like shadow of war or jedi fall in order that have a whole skill tree of, of fighting moves that adds to the complexity of the combat that have parries and the counters and have dodges this game is none of that you can't dodge blows you can't block blows there's none of that it's just like one attack move and that's all you get i'm not asking for like some superhero flick i just want some basic combat come, come on david no Hey, come on, David, come on! <laughs> David, David, are you okay? Also, the enemies in this game are just absolute geniuses. Dude, 
dude, you can't rum together two brain cells and figure out to jump over a one foot wall. Also, aside from the poor combat system, the combat in this game is legitimately absolutely hilarious because there's virtually no limits on what you're allowed to attack or kill inside of this game. Yes, I could randomly walk into a village in this game and kill all of the livestock and nobody bats an eye. Apparently, all it takes to kill a cow is just a couple punches. <laughs> Apparently also when you kill a camel, I didn't know this, but apparently it continues to chew its cud even after it's dead. At least according to this game. And this game is definitely accurate biology. In case you're wondering, the classic David versus the bear and versus the lion. David sucks in this game at killing the bears and the lion. Don't even try it. I tried using a slingshot, didn't work, and those bears will kill you in like two bites. But it gets even wilder. The game's lack of limits on who you're allowed to kill gets even more disturbing when I realized that as David, you could attack and fight your own own men. The game gets even, even more disturbing though, when it introduces a stealth feature that allows you to sneak up behind people and instantly kill them. So me, you know, I always test the limits of the games I'm playing and you know, I had to try it. So I stealth one of my own men it was not one of my proudest moments. Don't ask me why I tried. But I had to test exactly how broken the combat in this game really was. So I went straight to the top of the chain. I went to my brother. And uh, the Bible didn't tell us about that part. For those of you who think I'm some twisted kind of a murderer, it's called game testing. You're supposed to do stuff like this. And besides, I didn't know it was actually gonna let me kill my own brother. At least I wasn't sure it was going to. Once you actually get into Kila, there are these random cutscenes as you travel around the city where these Philistines are beating the citizens of the city. And the game actually gives you a choice. Do you want to save the person or not? Like they actually give you the liberty to decide, no, I just, I just want them to die. And there's also some random part of the game where I saw this person half submerge in the ground. And I don't know what's going on. Is that some type of superpower or something? But once you actually get into Kila, you can climb up on the roofs of the buildings and actually jump around like you're some Assassin's Creed knockoff. It's actually kind of cool for a little bit until you start getting stuck and you realize there's not much to do on the ceilings other than just look around. But your goal is to free these enslaved Israelites within this hold in the city. So you have to jump over this wall, get into the hold, beat a couple Philistines and find these levers or wheel things that you turn. Also love the fact that these Philistines are chasing you, trying to murder you. The second you touch one of these wheels, they just instantly freeze. You stupid. I'll wait to kill you until you're done spinning the wheel, man. Take your time. No hurry. There's also the ancient equivalent of Batman's grapple gun. You use it to jump across these ledges that are like five feet long. Gas powered magnetic grapple gun. I only saw one place in the game where you actually use the grapple gun and that can't be right because there's no way they develop a whole feature for only one part of the game. Like I saw this other picture where she was using it but I never saw the part of the game. So it's either in there somewhere or it's false advertising. It's fake news and if that's the case, I demand a refund on my free video game. The game is, if you haven't figured it out at this point, rather buggy. Some of the bugs are rather hilarious and then some of the other bugs actually get you stuck in death loops where you just die again and again and again. And then another one, I just fell so far that I fell into the abyss, I guess. I don't know what was going on. I also love how the horse, whenever you're riding it, can literally jump like 10 feet and you can dismount the horse mid-air nothing to it. So anyway, that's me breaking down, just poking fun at some of the things about this video game. If I had to break down my thoughts, I, I really get the impression this is like a one-man team, maybe like a college student who's studying game design or someone who maybe not made a game before. If that's the case, then I'm very impressed. If it's someone who's kind of new to game design, I think they've done notably, they created a somewhat cohesive game that's actually playable, although buggy. So my biggest advice to the person who developed this game is continue to develop video games and cultivate your craft, polish your art with each game that you create and definitely surround yourself with game developers who can critique your work and help you become better as an artist because I feel like a lot of the bugs and issues in this game probably would have been solved if the person who developed this game would have just gotten some feedback from people before releasing the game. That could have saved you from some of the things that you have happening in the game right now. But anyway, as far as comparing our to a AAA game, not close, but if it's like some indie developer, good job. Keep up the good work. I'm, I would be proud if I was you. So anyway, in the comments, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Tell me if you liked how this game looks or not. And with that, I've got nothing else to say. It's amazing. You guys don't have to hear my voice anymore. Peace out. As a Christ follower, 
I've made the resolution to take every opportunity possible to share my faith with the world. If you've never given your life to Christ, I'd love to share with you how Christ has transformed the man that I've become. I've attached my email onto this video where you can shoot me a quick email and I'd love to have that conversation. Or if you're a Christian struggling with your faith or just looking for ways to grow closer to God, I'd love to have that conversation with you. With that, you guys have an awesome day. God bless.